What up, y'all? It's Joe Button here to talk about Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to win real money while watching football. You can get up to 100 times your money. Prize Picks will give you $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Just download the Prize Picks app and use code SPOTIFY. That's code SPOTIFY on Prize Picks to get $50 instantly when you play a $5 lineup. Prize Picks, run your game. Must be present in certain states. Visit prizepicks.com for restrictions and details. Like, are, are you, you working? Did I don't you, think I'm going uh, back. Did you Never? watch the Wild game last night? No, it was I a game forgot of keep all away. about it. Yeah, it started at nine. It was a it was game two of two to keep one, away. and the commie got both of the uh, pucks. I was sleeping. Yep. Didn't he get all three against Columbus? He did. <laughs> he did. He got all two against the Vancouver's. You know what I draw my conclusion at? Huh? He's important. Yeah, he's uh, he's irreplaceable. <laughs> Royce was right. He's probably the best player to ever play in Minnesota. Yep. A hell of a lot better than Gabrick when he started. Well, Sydney was here, too, for a while, wasn't he? Well, for Shattuck, for God's sake. You know, he's well, from he Faribault. Oh, Sydney didn't play for the Wild? No, 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 no. Oh, why did I, I have said that once he did? on the uh, radio station? Some guys, yo, he's not, he just went to chat. No kidding. Yeah, I'm kidding. Oh, Fratelloni's I mean, Hardware and Garden Store. Like, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Don't say that. Can you get your haircut? Seriously, I'm, don't, I'm, I don't do that. I'm sorry. Can you it you really haircut? makes me angry. No, I did. I cut it I myself did. a week or so ago. Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Store. Did you get everything? I got everything, man. You use, Frat- use a mirror? And a spotlight. Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores, it looks like it, brings you Garage Logic <laughs> Podcast boys, number boys. 1029, <laughs> March 3rd, 2023. 65 <laughs> degrees on this day. Doesn't that sound delightful? Delightful, Joe. That was in 1905, and it was 13 below on two occasions, 1873 and 2019. And on this day. <clears throat> Today is March 3rd. In 1985, we had damn near 13 inches of snow. And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Hyde in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushir. Hi, this is the show where everything that's up is down and where everything is down is up. Okay. Because the world makes no sense. In is out. (coughs) Michael Prinzing wants us to know he was driving west out of Corcoran and saw a solar farm covered in snow. Absolute madness. He took a picture of it and sent it to me. Big solar farm. Hmm. All covered in snow. I would think even if solar panels were covered in snow, they would have diminished capacity. My guess would be the same. And I only guess that because, you know, you can get sunburn on a cloudy day. Yes. Right. Let me see. I'm going to look Isn't that, that up. is that the old wives' tale? Well, I think it was, I've got sunshine on a cloudy day. I saw the same thing at the <clears throat> so- solar farm um, near St. Cloud on uh, 94. I'm wondering why they don't have somebody that just goes out there and takes care of that. Isn't that a good point? According the- to energy.gov, researchers at test centers have shown that solar can still successfully generate electricity in snowy areas and other harsh environments. A dusting of snow has little impact. This on wasn't a dusting. Yeah, what I saw wasn't a dusting. It was I was going to get there. Uh, did we interrupt you? Sorry about that, Chris. A yeah. dusting of snow has little impact on solar panels because the wind can easily blow it off. However, no. however snow covered <laughs> panels generally don't generate. Well, the, what, what our man. Uh, uh, what our man uh, Michael saw was snow-covered panels, not a dusting that's going to be blown away. <clears throat> everything is up and everything. You know, Reavers played this for me before the show. He was alerted to it by a listener. I, I can't believe this. Tom, listener Tom. Tom. But, you know, I can believe it. Uh, Are you ready for it already? I want to set it up here by talking about it. Where's the piece you gave me on the current... Uh, FAA administrator. I set it on the top of your pile, bro. I don't see it. Well, who's the current FAA administrator? I will look that up. Uh, well, those are my two guys. Shoot. Right here, bro. Oh, I'm sorry. We have a current FAA administrator. Uh, Next page. 
Who that? Well, Billy. Yeah. Billy Steve, Nolan is acting administrator. Well, right Steve now. Dixon <clears throat> is is leaving the Federal Aviation Administration. He announced his resignation last week, leaving the aviation industry buzzing about who would replace the former Delta pilot. Boy, that was comforting to know that we had an FAA guy who was a pilot. guy that worked his way up. Right. Yeah, yeah, and perhaps one of the most critical. Regulatory positions on the planet. Yes. Right? That stands to reason. That's fair. We operate the safest aerospace system in the world. We want to make sure it stays that way, Dickinson said in his farewell. That pretty much summarizes the task ahead. <laughs> this is too good to I, be true. I know. I know. I'm This I'm pretty excited. much summarizes the task ahead for Dixon's replacement, <laughs> who will face un paralleled challenges coming out of the pandemic. So who should succeed Dixon and tackle the issues? At least four names are being mentioned, according to aviation sources. The names include Deborah Hurstman, the former uh, chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board, Bradley Mims, deputy administrator of the FAA, Sully Sullenberger. Sully. The U.S. Airways (coughs) hero pilot who was confirmed in December to be the U.S. representative on the Council of the International Civil Aviation Organization Board. Who's no longer able to walk through airport security because of his brass pair. And then there's John (laughs) Bocieri, a United Airlines pilot and a former U.S. congressman from Ohio. Uh, Dixon was a former Delta Airlines pilot. Delta and United Pilots are the two largest group in the Airline Pilots Association. Uh, And this goes on to say, I'm trying to just determine if uh, Dixon uh, Dixon was on the job two and a half years. And that might have been the toughest two years uh, in the business because of the pandemic. Uh, But he's, he's moving on. And uh, does it say where we're losing him? Uh, Two weeks before Dixon announced his planned departure, AT&T CEO John Stanky appeared on CNBC's Squawk Box. Stanky said the Federal Communications Commission told the FAA, we don't consider your concerns to be valid and you should go back. They're talking about the rollout of 5G cell phone service close to airports. That was another thing Dixon was, was dealing with. Well, we don't have any of those four. Oh, okay. Uh, but we have Biden's nominee for the FAA spot. His name is Phil Washington. He's an American government administrator currently working <laughs> as the CEO of Denver International Airport. Uh, he has served as the head of President Joe Biden's transportation transition team. Oh, okay. And uh, he's from Chicago. Uh, he was, uh, he's in the United States Army, and after 24 years, he had risen to the rank of Command Sergeant Major. Thank you for your service. hmm And he's being grilled here for this role now as head of the FAA. Grilled might be strong. He's being questioned. Right. He's being questioned by a, a new senator from South, from North Carolina named Theodore Budd, Ted Budd who uh, is a uh, Republican senator. Just what now, is he a senator or a House of Representatives? He is a senator. Uh, And he's newly elected to that job. He was in the House. And I don't know much about this fellow named Ted Budd, uh, but he's uh, he's in the position now of questioning uh, Biden's appointee, Phil Washington. So Mr. Washington, can you quickly tell me uh, what airspace requires an ADSB transponder? Not sure I can answer that question right now. That's, that's okay. We'll just keep going. So um, that's a that's a pretty important part. <laughs> so what are the six types of special use airspace that protect this national security that appear on FAA charts? Uh, sorry, Senator, I cannot answer that question. Okay. So what are the operational limitations of a pilot flying under? Basic med. Senator, I'm not a pilot, so... Uh, <laughs> but uh, obviously you'd ever see the F- Federal Aviation Administration. So um, any, any idea what those uh, restrictions are under basic med? 
quickly? Meaning medicine? Uh, well, some of the restrictions, I think, would be high blood pressure. Uh, some of them would I be... Think. Uh, it, it's more like how many passengers per airplane, how many pounds <laughs> yeah. in different categories, <laughs> and uh, what, what uh, altitude three or four? Uh, you can fly under. So, and, uh, and then uh, the amount of knots, it's under 250 knots. So okay. it's not having, having anything to do with blood pressure. Oh. So can you tell me what causes <laughs> an aircraft to spin or to stall? Uh, again, Senator, I'm not a pilot. Um, okay, uh, let's keep going. What are the three aircraft certifications FAA requires as part of the manufacturing process? Quickly, please. <laughs> three aircraft certifications. Mm. Uh, again, uh, what I would say to that is that one of my first priorities would be to fully implement that Certification Act uh, and report You know the three types, uh, yeah, Mr. Washington? Yeah, no. The, the three no. types? Okay. Yeah, that's type certificate, production certificate, and airworthiness certificate. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Oh. Let's just keep going, see if we can um, get, a right um, answer. get lucky Got here. One. So can you tell me what the minimum separation distance is for landing and departing airliners during the daytime? 15 Washington. seconds. I, I don't want to guess on that, Senator. Oh. Are you familiar with the difference between Part 107 and Part 44809 when it comes to unmanned aerial standards? Unmanned aerial Unmanned, like drones, are you familiar with yes, the difference? Yes, yes. Okay, you know the difference between those two, part 44809 and part 107? Do you know the difference there? No, I cannot uh, That's okay. spell that out. Hmm. Yeah. That was uh, 0 Maybe for 7. Maybe you have to take a couple of plates off here. According that to my count. It was almost like it was a skit. It's almost like an SNL skit back in the days when they were good. Yeah. <laughs> well, we should be able to take comfort in that. I mean, look at the job Pete Buttigieg has done. It's so ironic that he didn't know the distances between arriving planes and departing planes, the safe distance, because... That's been in the news prominently lately are all these near misses at yes. airports. Now, granted, I, he's going to be in some gated office someplace and have nothing to do with arriving planes and departing planes, but it's just ironic that that's in the news. But it does give you a little glimpse into the level of incompetency that Did, we are dealing with. Do any with. of us know? My no, guess but is we're also not up seconds. for the job. Isn't it? Uh, they're talking about from wheels up to our wheels up to touchdown, right? Wheels off the ground to wheels on the ground. <clears throat> uh, I would imagine. What so, is that turnaround? It's less than a minute. But but here, what I would tell you is, uh, in the unlikely event I was ever nominated to be the FAA, you'd probably head, study up. <laughs> I probably would maybe <laughs> yeah. do a little homework. Right. right. Yeah. You know, maybe yeah. I'd go in there with some knowledge. <laughs> uh, it's just I. I, I I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I do. We're uh, we're bleeped on all levels. From maybe all there is some. Is he the most qualified candidate? Well, maybe I was just going to say maybe there's some facet of life in which Mr. Washington would be the best in the game. Well, you introduced him as a government administrator, right? So but uh, he, you know, 22 years in the military, rose to the rank of command sergeant major. Uh, he's got a master of management, and so he, he can't can, flunk that. He can keep the books, is what he can do. Maybe. In 2000, he left the Army and applied for assistant general manager of administration at the Regional Transportation <laughs> District. Uh, he got that what gig. Is that job? Whatever. I, I just. Uh... Well, that's okay. He's so he does have a pretty Denver. impressive. He does have a pretty impressive uh, military record, and and that's he's to be um, commended for that, Rook. But. The he ain't guy ready knew for the less FAA. about this than me. Right, but I'm saying, but he ain't ready for the FAA. Matthew, I think actually you're probably more qualified. Well, we were going to give Rookie that test. Yeah. And your answers, you would not have known many of them. No. But they would have been, you would, you would have, have bluffed at least better than shot. this guy I probably, yeah. I probably yeah. would have better <laughs> uneducated guesses, yes. Now that's the thing about you. You always take a swing at it. This right. was Hank Jansen-esque. <laughs> Very much yeah. so. Wasn't it? This was yeah. Hank Johnson-esque. Good God. I, we I, uh, don't anticipate that. No, we we don't <laughs> think the island will tip over or capsize. Speaking of the airport, uh, being there this morning, I snuck over to terminal number two. That's not the main one. 
That is correct. And there were about, I don't know, 12 individuals that were going to a location that I had to take a selfie with that were all podcasters and garage logicians. Huh. I knew when the guy looked at me, I knew right away he knew who I was. Then I went down two gates over, and there were a bunch of St. John's and St. You just Fanny's. walk around there and hope you get noticed? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. That's my uh, that's yeah. my goal. Um, and uh, as he's wearing his rookie shirt, they were well aware of um, <laughs> Garage Logic. They're all. Do you have an entourage that follows you around? When I have you're... Uh, clipboard people. Yeah, I'm bigger <laughs> than you think. I walk out of here and my head swells Yet. the size of a Chinese air balloon that's spying on the U.S. Yet, meanwhile, I text him a couple weeks ago as the the bride and I are about to fly out. Hey, are you around? No, uh, because yeah. I'm looking for a better parking it. spot. No. I don't do baggage and I don't do uh, upgrades. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so GL's alive and well at the airport, regardless of whether our FAA commissioner is a nerd or not. Well, that's... But how... You know, I've said this before, and I used to say it facetiously. It's growing less facetious. How far are we away from lousy doctors? The heart um, surgeon. Well, uh, my experience uh, last summer and fall, oh, we're there. Baby, we are there. How far away are we from non-medicinal knowledge taking precedent over medicinal knowledge? How far away are oh. we from mm. uh, perceived excellence of inclusion, diversity, equity, taking precedence, oh. precedence over knowing how blood flow works? Yeah, you in the back. Oh, pick me, pick you, me, pick you in me. the back. Joe, would you like this news story out of Delaware? Is it Jermaine? I'll let you decide. Okay. I report, you decide. All right. Yeah, who is Jermaine? Is, is he one Jackson. of the Jacksons? One of the Jackson. Dang it, get out of my head. <laughs> Delaware just announced, Joe, that they're going to lower the passing score on the bar exam in a push for racial diversity. It's not supposed to be the barrier, they say. In other words... Knowing the law shouldn't be a barrier. Why let that get in the way? Was it Jermaine? Yes. Thank you. Joe, what was your question um, after the doctor's thing? Something about medicinal, non-medicine? I, 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 think, I think cultural ideologies and stuff you can't flunk will take precedence over biology courses. Um, I'm trying to figure out a way to formulate the answer in terms of COVID. Um, well, you might cut them all. You might cut the medical world a break on COVID because they're still struggling to understand what they were dealing with. Um, for those of you wondering, this was uh, this was announced by the Delaware Supreme Court. But how many nurses, doctors, PAs, etc., were fired or run out of their jobs because they didn't get the jab? Is kind of my angle. I'm coming at that. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I with. don't know where to take you on that. But that was the introduction of the government controlling medicine. Yeah, and yeah, saying yeah, yeah. not the introduction. The no, you're right. Sustaining of the government saying what what. Well, or even public opinion. Well, look at the it. grief uh, Jensen took as yes. a doctor, right. and is still taking it. Yeah. By the way, yeah. Merely because. His own opinions didn't square with what he was being told they should be. Well, speaking of that, speaking of that, I mean, I, everywhere I look today, I'm sorry, GLers, I know it's Friday and it's parte. Yeah. But I told you, you never <laughs> use the I Friday show I want to do the show like it's a Monday. Parte. Like is it's it, a Monday. Is it Fry-yay? Fry-yay. Jesus. Hey, girl, Hey. <laughs> I don't know if this is on topic or not, but it seems somewhat uh, not necessarily unrelated. This is del out of WLAF in Tampa, Florida. <laughs> Florida Senator Jason Brodeur, a Republican from Lake Mary, wants bloggers who write about Governor DeSantis, Attorney General Ashley Moody, and other members of the Florida Executive Cabinet or Legislature to register with the state or face fines. <laughs> Broder's proposal, Senate Bill 1316, Information Dissemination, would require any blogger writing about government officials to register with the Florida Office of Legislative Services or the Commission on Ethics, 
In the bill, Brodeur wrote that those who write an article, a story, or a series of stories about the governor, the lieutenant governor, a cabinet officer, or any member of the legislature and receives or will receive payment for doing so, much must register with state offices within five days after publication of an article that mentions an elected state official. If another blog post is added to a blog, the blogger would then be required to submit monthly reports on the 10th of each month with the appropriate state office. They would not have to submit a report on months when no content is published. For blog posts that contain an elect that concern an elected member of the legislature or an officer of the executive branch, monthly reports must disclose the amount of compensation received for the coverage rounded to the nearest ten dollar value. Hmm. If compensation is paid for a series of posts or for a specific amount of time, the blogger would be required to disclose the total amount to be received upon publication of the first post in said series or time frame. Additional compensation must be disclosed later on. Failure to file or register if the bill passes would lead to daily fines for the bloggers with a maximum amount per report, not per writer, of $2,500. bucks. Mm. The bill also requires that bloggers file notices of failure to file a timely report the same way that lobbyists file their disclosures and reports on assessed fees. Files must be pay- fines must be paid within 30 days of payment notice unless an appeal is filed with the appropriate office. Fine payments must be deposited into the Legislative Lobbyist Registration Trust Fund if it concerns an elected member of the legislature. Explicitly, the blogger rule would not apply to newspapers under Brodeur's proposed legislation. What? Huh. Keep going. In addition to the blogger regulations, the bill also removes provisions of state statutes to require judicial notices of sales to be published on publicly accessed websites. I don't know what that means. And specifies that a government agency can publish legally required advertisements and public notices on county sites if the cost is not paid by or recovered from an individual. That's that's the end of that story. No, it's not the end. Should the bill pass, it will take effect immediately. This is might be one of the most frightening things I've ever heard. This is truly alarming and the end of freedom in Florida. Well, it's surprising that it's Florida. It really is, and it's proof um, that conservativeism and republicanism are two separate things f- getting further apart every single day. Farther apart, further, both. Further, further apart every single day. Farther no, time. Farther. He, he, the, the Republicans do not represent us anymore. This bill is frightening. This is government-controlled media. Didn't we go through the same sort of kind of thing with uh, the Biden administration early on, mm-hmm. the first couple of months? Mm-hmm. Well, let's try to... Uh, no, the, uh, okay, let's, yeah, let's well, do let's, it. Let's yeah. try yeah. to figure out what... I don't know, Rook, call this person. Call Florida Senator Jason Brodeur, B-R-O-D-E-U-R. Just like it sounds. You know why this is happening. I mean, I can speculate why. I bet you I'm not wrong. Well, what's your He got his feelings hurt. Maybe. He got his feelings hurt by a blogger. Uh, the young kid, 47. Call him. <clears throat> okay. Does, does it list what he's done for a living? 47's uh, young. Nice. Or you can't. You don't have a phone. Give the number to Reavers. I'm trying to figure out what rationale we could come up with that would be plausible. This isn't plausible. In any, you're restricting free speech. You're now paying to speak freely. And if this happens on the political scale, it's going to end up going across the board, and it'll come up here, and you will be subject to this. HB, HBI and all their properties and all the podcasts that she has around the country will be uh, susceptible to this kind of 
fines or um, suspensions, um, tax or whatever they well, want to call Well, that's a hill this. I'd die on. Yeah, hell yes, I'll die on it. Right. Yeah. He's a Republican. Yeah, we know that. And we're going to take a break and you provide Reavers with the telephone number. Okay. There we go. But first, I'm going to tell you bunga bunga. where to go All right. to get your taxes done. Okay. You're going to go with the best, aren't you? Well, you better because the government will come and get you. You don't want to go with Tax and Go or Tax City. You want the best, and that's Linda Keller. And if it says Tax Buffet, you don't no. want no, no. I don't think Linda started as Tax Buffet. She's just been doing it the right way for a long time. Twenty plus years in the business, she's a GLer and she's the best. Keller Tax Services. She prepares all types of returns for all types of professions and businesses, and for all types of dum-dums. Me and Kenny are going to get our taxes done with Linda. She's also perfected the virtual tax appointment, either via video or phone, and it's safe document exchange options, both encrypted and secure. It's the confidence of a professional with the convenience of staying right at home. She also has weekends and Saturday appointments available, but if you're going to do that, Call now because the Saturdays always fill up fast. So get your appointment booked today. Competitive pricing to do it yourself software. That flat fee also includes state income tax return, e filing of all returns, and direct deposit of any refunds. So call today 320 352 0013. That's 320 352 0013. Or visit her website kellertaxservice.com get that appointment booked today and tell her you heard about her here on the garage logic podcast this is ricey for the canopy group we are coming up on saint patrick's day the luck of the irish you know that do you make practical decisions based on being lucky do you have one agent representing only one company for your home and auto insurance are you hoping they are lucky enough to have the best coverage at the best price with a single source at the canopy group we wish you the best of luck but we also believe you deserve more than luck when it comes to your home and auto insurance you need to rely on a process the canopy group process carefully selects 40 professionals and hand selects 16 companies to run thousands of different insurance scenarios each month. This due diligence and hard work results in the best coverage at the best price for Canopy clients. No luck involved, just a disciplined and dedicated approach to serving you. Remember, new clients enjoy an average savings of over $800 annually. Contact the Canopy Group today at 800-967-3389 or visit them online at thecanopygroup.com. This next song is about Kenny Olsen. If we Latte Schmate. Big Here's Back Joe Yard. Sergio. Miss this band every day. Good guys. Tri-State Bobcat, also good guys. They're coming into spring with some deals that are absolutely amazing. Uh, and if you've been holding out for the right price on a Toro snowblower, Boy, today is the day. Do it to, before the end of the day today. Tri State Bobcat offering sale prices on two different models um, the Toro Power Clear single stage blowers and the Power Max two stage snow blowers. You're going to look forward to the next snowmageddon. Uh, and when it snows three inches, you're going to wish it was 10 inches. That's how fun they are. If you already have one and you're concerned about spring, summer, fall right now, uh, Tri-State Bobcat, they have absolutely the best pricing available on select previous model years, both the Time Cutter and the Titan Zero Turn mowers. We're talking anywhere from 42 inches to 60 inches. Discounts ranging 10 to 20% on the, under the promo pricing. Uh, and there's a big bunch of both snow blowers and zero turns. So um, you get on the website, um, tristatebobcat.com, or better yet, get on the horn, call them up, tell them you're a GLer. And you need that uh, snowblower, that zero-turn mower. Toro, they make both activities a lot of fun. I'm telling you, both levers forward, flying through that deep lawn, going back and forth instead of circles. It's wonderful. Uh, And big announcement, uh, Tri-State Bobcat now owns Mankey's Outdoor Equipment down in Owatonna. And since they're now part of the family, everything we say about Tri-State in the Twin Cities, also in effect down in Owatonna. Uh, and like I said, when you stroll in there, make sure you tell them you heard it on GL. We're talking Burnsville, Little Canada, Hudson, and everything you will ever needed in life 
it's really the man's store. I shouldn't even say that. It's just a fun, fun store. It's tristatepobcat.com. Yes. I was provided two numbers. The first one is out of service. The second one goes to his voicemail. Would you like to would you like to leave him a voicemail? No. Punch it through the board. No. You sure? Yeah, it's the hell with him. Uh we're talking about a Florida He's got good pipes. He's senator named Jason Brodeur. Senator Jason Brodeur. Republican. Who wants bloggers who write about government officials to be registered with the state? And it's more insidious than that. If if you have to be registered with the state, wouldn't that logically result in whatever agency registers you having the authority to reject your registration? Mm-hmm. Well, that's dangerous. Isn't that already somewhat taking place with the the press corps and who can ask a question in a press setting right now? I've given up uh, believing in anything about the press corps. Those are just third rail people. They sure. have nothing to do with the rest of us. This has got to just be protecting DeSantis because he, he doesn't like getting ripped. Well, it's it's terrible. And here here's my here's my prediction. It will not get passed. It will not get well, passed. I, I believe the same thing about ban the lawnmower bill in uh the gas powered lawnmower bill in Minnesota. It will not get passed. The the uh the caveat though is it won't get passed this time. These yeah. these these challenges uh uh the weight of these challenges are getting heavier and heavier. Uh, I don't think Florida will go for this uh this time. I don't think Minnesota will ban all gasoline powered lawn and garden equipment this time but this is who we're dealing with we're dealing with people who have the temerity to introduce this stuff there was That's a time in this part. country when it would have been laughable for heather edelson laughable for her to to suggest that we should get rid of gasoline powered lawnmowers and garden equipment well the problem is that's no longer laughable these you mean are, laughable we, across the board. Now there, there's certain a lot of people that agree with yeah, that. Yeah, we laugh, Yeah, but then we've seen the development of people who say, hmm, that's not a bad idea. Because they say the same thing about automobiles and um, trains and airplanes and everything else. Now, along those lines, I have an interesting note from Paul Root who says, Hail the Flashlight King. Hail, Hail you. you! I am unaccustomed to receiving a reply to an email to my elected representative that isn't explaining why I'm wrong. But now that I'm out of the seven county area and in Wright County, I got a nice note and I'm getting weekly updates on the legislative process and how the DFL is running roughshod over the rules. On another subject, I got a brilliant quote from another webcast that I listened to. Most people don't aspire for justice or equality they aspire to join the ranks of the oppressors. Mm. Ooh. Well, anyway, Paul wrote to Marion O'Neill, Representative Marion O'Neill. Look him, him or her up, Rook. Marion O'Neill. M A R I O N O'Neill, O N E I L L, at the Minnesota House. And uh, our friend Paul Root wrote, let me see if Paul included his note to. Uh, uh, yes. District 29B, Joe. Right. Well, what Paul wrote was, don't replace gas with electric. Representative Marion Neal, I am writing to you today to ask that you please do not follow the lead of California and ban the use of gas-powered equipment. There may be a day when electric tools can match the power, efficiency, and longevity of gas equipment, but that day has not yet come, especially in Minnesota. Electric lawnmowers, leaf blowers, and hedge clippers may work on small yards in Minneapolis or St. Paul, but the current technology is completely inadequate for larger yards in the suburbs, exurbs, and greater Minnesota. I can't imagine how any outdoor business or farm could get along without gas-powered equipment. The thought of cleaning up after a damaging tornado with electric chainsaws should give anyone supporting this bill pause. The bill's authors wisely left snowblowers off the list of banned power equipment, but it's clear by their intent they will be added in future legislation. I fear outboard motors, ATVs, jet skis, snowmobiles, and generators will be added as well. I also oppose separate legislation banning gas-powered Zambonis in Minnesota's hockey arenas. 
Our rinks are still recovering from the cost of updating cooling systems due to previous government mandates. The state of hockey cannot afford another misguided government policy. Technological advancements always find their way to the consumer in a healthy marketplace. Please oppose these bills that artificially interfere with the market to the detriment of Minnesotans. Sincerely, Paul Root. That's a great letter. That's what all GLers have to do. And uh, here's here's the return from Marion O'Neill. Do we have any information on Marion yet? Uh, House of Representatives, a Republican. She represents 29B, which includes Buffalo and Monticello, parts of Wright County. Uh, attended Bemidji State University, graduating with a B.S. in Applied Psychology, and Regent University, graduating with an M.A. in Counseling. She worked in the Minnesota Senate as a legislative assistant to Senator John Howe from 20. 20- 10 to 2012. Does she have a family, do we know? Um, she has two children. Mm-hmm. Uh, she lives in Maple Lake. Yep. Her occupation is business person yep. and legislator. And she is a female. She's a female, correct. Greetings, Paul. Thank you for your email. I am a hard no on this bill. I highly recommend you email the two House authors and the one Senate author. Find all the info about the authors and more here. And then she linked him to the bills. I purchased an electric lawnmower four years ago when I bought my 1904 two-story home in Maple Lake with a very tiny lot in town. It came with two lithium batteries, which when new could not mow the entire lawn without being recharged. But to take a charge, the batteries had to cool down. Every single time I wanted to mow, it turned into an entire day affair. Then those lovely and very expensive batteries died after less than three years. I bought a compatible electric edger and started trading out the one good battery with the one that was dead and got a little life out of it. My soon-to-be husband finally had enough and bought a $10 gas-powered mower on an online auction. I just recently checked the price of those batteries, and they're now $200 apiece. Wow. I tell you this because I told this story to Representative Heather Edelson, the author of this dumb bill. She had no idea, none. From what I could tell, she had no experience with electric-powered lawn equipment. She is rather wealthy, lives in Edina, and I would guess she does not do her own lawn work. But she sure has a strong ideology that climate change must be stopped at all costs. Have a safe week. Thank you, Marion O'Neill. Now, there's a nice interaction between a citizen and his representative. She's 53, Mm -hmm. and she has five grandchildren. Wonderful. And that makes a difference in how she thinks because she's had to deal somewhat with real life. Right. Right. Well, thank you, you. Paul, for sharing that. That's wonderful. It's almost a ray of hope, isn't it? The um, battery-powered technology among yard equipment is has made a huge leap and is getting a lot better. And uh, I don't know if I've told you this on the air, my son drove a Zamboni for, I believe it was Parade, is it Parade Stadium? Parade has an ice arena. Parade Arena, right. Right by the uh, Cherry thing. And I'm going to guess this one might have been 2019. He was just out of high school. So on uh, February 16th, when we were talking about this, I sent him a text um, were any of the Zambonis you used fully electric? And he responded, they all were. Really? They got rid of the LP Zambonis a little bit before he got there. Mm-hmm. Really? And if you think about it, it makes sense to put an electric Zamboni inside an ice arena because, how, I mean, they're not being used for long, long periods of time, and they can easily be plugged in during the period, right? I, I won't contest that. Yeah, it, it seems like it works there. Mm-hmm. I think it's even, I didn't know that. I, I, I really admire that about your son that he got to, that was his job. That was something that I am jealous of, and I know Gabe would be jealous of. Yeah, but your kid abandoned his Zamboni life. <clears throat> he did once he realized that there's no f- real future in it for yeah. him. It, it, it's for it's, him. It's, yeah. Well, he it, could it, have been the head of the Zamboni company. He got his, uh, all he wanted to do was dump the snow. And yeah. whatever arena he went to, he, he, uh, Batted those blue eyes and blonde hair, and every Zamboni driver let him. I, I realize we're going down a non sequitur yeah. uh, avenue here, but Sorry. and I'm not even the, involved. You're the right. biggest mistake I made as a parent, <laughs> the biggest mistake I've made as a parent, is I did not go down and watch my son 
drive the Zamboni. Oh. And I will forever be sorry about that. Yeah, what that's a, a bad jackass. What a total jackass. What if someone steps up, Kenny, and offers Ben one more shot? Oh, I'll, yeah. I'll drive any amount of miles. Any <laughs> amount of, Reavers, I was the kind of dad where I went to his baseball practices. Yeah. I was that, you know, right. and just sat there and watched it. And I missed this. Yeah, what a that's, jerk. that's a. Uh, well, there's got to be, but it's more let down. There's you know? got to be a spot because I know Ben would do that in a second as a part time gig, wouldn't he? Probably not. We could get he's, him into the Highland Arena, no problem. He's got a pretty good gig with Dave at Pro Turf. That's true. Well, That's aren't we happy. short of Zamboni drivers in this state? Seriously, isn't there? That's a what I thought. I, I saw that know. somewhere. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah, they're trying to hire two. I'm no... getting. Uh, I'm getting increasingly comfortable uh, concluding that Heather Edelson. For me, Dinah, uh, just has consumed all the Kool Aid, uh, and and really doesn't have a clue about yard work or garden work okay. or mowing the lawn, and and did not take into consideration the uh, extraordinarily significant ramifications of her bill. That's My, why I don't yeah. think it'll be passed this time. My feeling is she uses the. Uh, Hanlon's uh, razor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's just stupid. I think she is, Joe. I I think she is. <clears throat> Heather, I think you're stupid for writing that <clears throat> bill. Then you were joined by Jerry Newton, and then you got Omar Fateh in the Senate, who also strikes me as a guy who's not spent a lot of time doing yard and garden work mm-hmm. and also has consumed the Kool-Aid because he sees it as a way to get more money. And so I don't trust anybody who came up with the bill on the House side or the Senate side. I trust none of them. They don't know what they're doing. And their their actions are ruinous if it should pass. I don't think it will this time. The actions of Jason Brodeur in Florida are ruinous to a free country. Reavers might be right. He's nursing a grudge. Mm-hmm. Or, or the word went out from DeSantis Cover my ass. I don't want these bloggers talking about me and Disney anymore. And it, he, it, and and that won't pass this time. But what kind of country we're watching a tailspin and, and we're trying to we're trying to grab the controls and, and right the nose of the of the plane here, but we're struggling. Block that metaphor, right. as they used to say in the New Yorker magazine. Block that metaphor. Can I play the role of our uh, missing member today? Sure. This DeSantis and this bill kind of reminds me of something a, a certain other politician would have done when he was the president. Yeah, and I'm, I, I, I desperately want to believe in DeSantis, but he keeps doing things that make me pause, that give me pause. And if, if you're a GLer and you just heard that, address your mail to John Hyde. Right. <laughs> Even though I said it. <laughs> the only thing electric that works well that i'm concerned with is an electric bike you think so well they got them the Bentelli e-bikes at ecofun other brands of electric bikes really improves your biking mileage because you know you just pedal along if you need the assist you flip a lever and bing bang boom you're passing people and uh, you shout out passing on the left and you yep. get a little tweet of the on horn the there. tweet a little horn there they have the scooters that turn urban errands into Adventures. They have the youth recreational ATVs, the golf carts, the uh, exotic motorcycles and scooters. Just really, what a fun store. Two locations, EcoFun Motorsports in Forest Lake. You're going up 35, exit on 97, go west about a block or two, and boom, there it is. Store opened last summer. Great service in there, great apparel, helmets. Then if you're down Burnsville Way, it's on the uh, service road near County Road 42, EcofunMotorsports.com, a great website. Check the website out alone and see uh, why you're going to be tempted to make a visit to Ecofun. Right now, they'll store anything you buy until the weather clears. Uh, great people. Uh, Tim had that golf cart I want at the golf that show. That thing was cool. It was a very cool golf cart. Uh, so check it out. Uh, we ain't whistling Dixie here. This is, this is the real deal. EcofunMotorsports.com. It's not the season. 
season. It's the time. Yeah. It's not the season. But I will tell you this, folks. No matter what season we are in, you need to make sure that your furnace is working properly, your air conditioning unit is working properly, and if it's making funny noises, it might be time for a tune-up. Now, you may not have to completely replace it. It might just need some love. We'll get that love from Welter Heating, Ray and Welter Heating, online at welterheating.com. Again, I can't stress this enough, and this is exactly what they want to stress. They've been around for four generations and 100 years. They've won the Angie's List Super Service Award. They're going to be up front. They're not going to try to make money off you and go away and go to the next town. They've been here 100 years. They're probably going to be here 100 years more. They've seen everything from A to Z on your heating units and your cooling units. So trust a local company that's been around. 612-825-6867. 612-825-6867. They'd love to know that you heard about this ad on the Garage Logic podcast. So give me some love in there. So if you want to schedule an appointment, go online and do it right now or go and call them if you want to. Welterheating.com. Make sure your shelter is heated or cooled. Bob Welter. Are you ready for Fun Friday? I'm trying to hear the song. <laughs> Patrick, maybe you were right. What? That commie might be the best we've ever seen. He had all three against Columbus the other night, and he had both of them oh. last night in Vancouver. Oh, did he get both of them? I don't know. It was too late for me. I remember. I, I saw they won 2-1 to one again. and uh, He had them Vancouver's both. T- uh, yeah, Vancouver's terrible. Yeah, he's, uh, we got, you know, they, they could end up winning the division. They got to think about him as an MVP candidate, don't they? Oh, hell But yes. they yeah. really, they really lean on him. I mean, oh, sorry. Right. Well, he, yeah, because uh, you know why? Because he's good. <laughs> he's got a big, fat Russian ass on him, too, so they can't move him off the puck. That's yeah. the other thing. The, you really know, good. I think you two are, are selling yourselves short on hockey evaluators in this town. Because if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> both of you had solid wisdom for the Wild Club. I believe it was months ago in the early stages of the season where they were getting, you know, six, allowing six goals a game, and Patrick had said, Got to tighten her up on their own end. And the other day, Joe, you had said... Well, during this recent slump, I said, don't worry about it. No, you said yeah, they got to right. find a way to put the biscuit yeah. in the basket. Yeah. And yeah, now they've right. done both. And that's, uh, those well, are keen good, observations. That's right. Well, the good news is they only have to put it in the basket twice a game. Boy, wait, because they're only giving up one. Everybody, right. I don't know who the goalie how, was last night. It was a Sorry. flower. The flower? Yep. The, the flower turned yep. in a good game, huh? All right. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe against Vancouver, they only had six or seven shots. So <laughs> I knew that was coming. Yeah. What do you I think of, uh, give us your uh, take on uh, Lindsey Whalen. Okay, I was going to tell you this, that uh, yesterday was the 32nd anniversary of what we call uh, TTBT. Uh, Tiptoe ball throwing? Yes. It was 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Oh. oh. Yeah. How, how are you today, doing with Don Shelby these days? <laughs> today, today I'm at the Big Ten uh, women's basketball tournament, so we've come a long way in our, uh, in our uh, I guess, gender recognition in a mere 32 years. So. Yes, we have. <laughs> yes, we have. Not that we're uh, counting. Lindsay, uh, well, somebody called up and said, this is the 30th anniversary. And I said, ah, ah, I know the exact date, pal. You're two years off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because uh, March 2nd, 1991. Uh, I, you know, then four days later, the publisher called me. <laughs> I was in spring grade. <laughs> he was not happy. Uh, anyway, uh, the uh, Lindsay getting fired, I, I think I kind of, Take it as a mercy firing. I just, I, she didn't look happy to me. She didn't look like she was enjoying this. Uh, you know, she'd spent her whole life being told how great she was. We had a case of this. I'm not saying that anything like this, but Kevin McHale, you know, was the greatest guy that ever lived. Right. And he was fine when he was first here. And then people started taking, you know, questioning a few things about him. And he became a like a complete jackass. And uh, as far as dealing, you know, he's great when he's on TV and stuff. But as far as dealing with the, uh, you know, local media or something like that, he got extremely defensive. And I don't, Lindsay never got that way. But Lindsay, I think, was it was like 
damaging to her to have people questioning her because she, they never had and never had to in the past. Too. That's the way that was my psychological read on it anyway. Now, Coyle was a complete dummy for fire today or yesterday instead of waiting until Monday when the Big Ten tournament was out of town for mm-hmm. goodness sake. I think part of her embarrassment yesterday was uh, the fact that all these other coaches were in town, all these other teams were in town, and uh, they they lied to us about everything yesterday. You know, they said it was a mutual decision. Well, she got fired, and uh, they also told us that she was meeting with her players and uh, coaches, uh, and that's why she couldn't make the press conference. And uh, actually, she uh, just kind of broke down on the way up there. And uh, she admitted that on Twitter, that she just kind of broke down. And uh, that's why she couldn't. She didn't feel like she could go to the, go to the press conference because of that. So they basically lied about everything. Mm-hmm. She's going to land in Coyle's office for a couple of years as an assistant. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, she's supposed to uh, try to raise uh, name, image, and likeness money, but maybe not. I heard a rumor that she might be going back to the links in some capacity. So mm-hmm. it, it's just a coincidence that she signed up for as long as her contract was, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I yeah. guess they just threw that out. Uh, uh, she's going to get paid till April 12th, uh, 2025. That doesn't mean she has to go to work. So. All right. Are you uh, there now at the tournament? I mean, I'm in the back in the press room. Yeah, I got something else to do. I'm going to watch the Iowa girl, uh, Caitlin Clark, who is fantastic. She's a, she's a uh, relentless uh, scorer and uh, a cutthroat uh, basketball player. And uh, she's a lot of fun to watch. She's in the 5:30 game though. So, uh, and then, nobody showed up to play at the Honda last week, but they all showed up to play at Arnie's deal. Yeah, because it's a designated event. Yeah. And uh, I was going to actually talk to Hollis about not being a designated event and what this means because they've made it, you know, they've changed the rules to make it even more obvious that you're a third-rate tournament. But uh, Hollis had to inform me that the that, that it is not official yet and they can't talk about it until after the – a guy like him can't talk about it until after they meet with the – PGA Tour uh, at, this week at the play, next week at the players. So okay. he uh, can't talk about it. But, yeah, how about the fact that they basically are stealing the live thing and no cut? Right. Did you see that for next year? No cut. I did not see that. Tournament. I did not see that. No cut. Uh, 70, I think, field for me, there's 70 <laughs> to 78 players and no cut. Huh. And for eight for eight designated events, and that doesn't include the players and the uh, four majors and uh, the, the FedEx tournaments and uh, and those others. But there's eight of the weeklies, which are what, maybe 25 of them? Eight of those 25, there won't be a cut. So, How can a guy like Bryson DeChambeau, not that I miss him terribly, but how can he look at that Arnold tournament and that beautiful course and all those players and think he's better yeah. off? I don't get it. Yeah, I don't either. I mean, they had uh, – Somebody told me that their viewing audience for their first event last week, mm-hmm. nationally, live was three hundred thousand. I couldn't find it on TV. It yeah, was on I TV, couldn't... but I didn't know. I didn't know how to find I, it. I, I didn't know where to find it, but I wouldn't have watched it anyway. But three hundred thousand is, uh, you know, I, I don't know. That would be a hell. A, we have uh, that many listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we can add them up anyway. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's uh, it is it's ridiculous that these guys. Nobody cares what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody cares. You watch that event like at Riviera a couple weeks ago. It's fantastic. Yeah, uh, we cared about it. We cared yeah. about it. So I agree. You got anything else on your mind? Uh not uh, not too much. I've uh, I've. I'm uh, exploring the uh, shot clock in baseball a little more closely. I, I don't like the fact that the uh, the hitter has to have his face facing the pitcher with eight seconds left. Uh, if he wants to have his head out over the plate when the guy throws the ball, that's his problem, mm-hmm. right? He shouldn't have to be staring at the pitcher, right? Maybe I'll win you over yet. <laughs> yeah, I think 15 seconds might be a little tight. I think it might be 17 would be better. It's but, too uh, tight. <laughs> it's too tight. Yeah, it's too tight. It's, it, it, it is too tight, but... Uh, I also keep hearing, Joe, and a lot of people think that the it's going to be a bigger advantage for the pitcher than the hitter because mm-hmm. 
you know, some guy blows one by at the pitcher's neck and he swings at it, and now he's got two strikes on him. He's got no time to contemplate what this guy might throw to him next, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Don't you, as a hitter, don't you have to have a deep thought, you know? And say, you get to have thoughts, yeah. Adjust your, yeah, uh, yeah. Adjust your gloves, maybe. you know? No, that, they could have solved everything with that. <laughs> well, you got, yeah, well, no Velcro, Tom. That's I'm right. You, this this could have all been cured without if they banned Velcro. Right. So, uh, I'll, I'll bet I'll, I'll see you in person Monday, huh? Oh, yeah, I'll be there. I was, uh, yes, oh, heavens, yes. We'll have some. Uh, if we're as good as we were last week, it, we'll be very satisfied. It was, <laughs> it was very good. Buddy. It was very good. All more right, well, you than, have fun at that more tournament. Than the, more than the listeners deserve. That's yeah, true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, goodbye. All right. All right. Here's a man who spends hours in hardware stores, sifting through the nuts and bolts of life. Joe Suchere. Oh. Kiss the post, Christopher Reavers. Oh, thank you. I hit the post. Oh. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Best thing about Shelby? When you were both on the air competing with each other, he would have to come home to tell his what. His wife would have to ask him what he did on the show because she listened to Garage Logic every right. day. <laughs> Don doesn't have any That's hard right. feelings about that at all. He told me the other <laughs> months ago. The uh, the Liberty Safe March Madness sale madness. still going on right this now. Is crazy at Maple Grove Lock and Safe. It truly is, Matthew. It's very nutty. crazy. I mean, nutty. Where do you, you put it? I, I mean, we're talking up to four hundred dollars in savings through that's March. That's crazy. That is. On, uh, that's crazy. It is, and it's going for another what couple of weeks through March fourteenth. It's on select Liberty safes. Um, we're talking the Centurion twenty fours. They've got a forty minute fire protection. The USA series, the Colonial series, the Fat Come Boy. Come on, which, the Fat Boy. That's the one I like. Uh, that's the one I like. You got to have a Fat Boy. Level five, one hundred ten minute fire rating. But if you want the big, big one, you're going to go for the Lincoln Series, level 7 security ratings, a two-hour fire protection rate, also is, on sale. That's crazy. Save up to $400, uh, Mr. Sidekick in a can, during the <laughs> March Madness sale What's through the 14th. What's the one that protects it forever from a fire? Wait a minute. Read that again. Uh, that's not starting a fire in your home. That's oh, that's oh. the one you want. All right. All right. Uh, How can they do that? I don't, I don't know, Matthew, in a can. I just don't get it. Uh, but they do it because they're the best. It's the Liberty li- lineup. They're made here in the United States by Americans, transferable lifetime warranties, and professional delivery and installation always available. Our guy Rich at Maple Grove Lock and Safe has it all, 6901 East Fish Lake Road, and you can see everything you ever need in safes at maplegrovelockandsafe.com. So, Suits, you know I have... Special MnDOT access um, with the cameras well, around you're town. You're an advanced traffic guy, and I have the scanner going. So this morning, ironically, right after I read a very interesting article, um, I hear a trooper report in that uh, one is running from him at 100 miles an hour in um, in North Minneapolis, and they're approaching 49th. I click the cam just in time to see this guy blasting up the exit ramp, northbound 94 to 49th he's going too fast to make the turn he launches off the bridge barrel rolls in the air and lands on the uh, rubber uh, on the tires all the airbags went off the driver crawls out of the driver's side the passenger pushes out of the windshield they both run across both lanes of free uh, of freeway thank goodness it was a friday with a light rush then they didn't get hit uh, ran up on the frontage road, up on the embankment, and into a neighborhood. And um, the troopers got him within 10 minutes. They were both uh, under arrest. But I really thought it was interesting, given they were driving a Kia, and the news today, um, the article I was reading, was about our attorney general and the mayor of Minneapolis. And St. Paul. And St. Paul getting on board, going after... They're idiots. Kia... Instead of going after crime. The damn Kia was too easy for those kids to steal. That's Kia's fault. <laughs> Honest to God. I wish I told we were you, making we it up. Started the show, I told you. Up is down and down is up. And now you got these morons like Allison 
Carter and the little guy Fry, they're they've written letters to Kia and Hyundai. In fact, under the uh, heading of the Attorney General Ellison, uh, demanding that the companies recall Kias and Hyundais Unreal. because they're too easy to steal. Unbelievable. Never mind uh, expecting civility from youth. Right. No, it's not fair. These kids are, it's Kia's fault that these cars are too easy to steal. Uh, we had the story a couple even, of... I can't even take it. When we were talking about this a few weeks, maybe a month or so ago, Kia did update things, and they changed the way they work about two years ago, if I recall. So the new models are fine. It's these older, let's just say older than 2021. Ellison, Carter, and Fry and law enforcement officials said it's not happening fast enough to keep these cars so easy from being stolen. And the thefts continue to rise, with Kias and Hyundais making up two of every five vehicles stolen in Minneapolis last year. The problem of Kia and Hyundai thefts exploded across the U.S. last year after details about the vulnerability of the vehicles that use a traditional metal ignition key were spread across social media. So these idiots' kids are just smart enough to go on TikTok and watch how you rip one of these things off. Mm -hmm. So... uh, Oh, what's, what's it say I mean, here? Right there. TikTok, where teens were baited to answer the call of the Kia challenge. That TikTok is not good. <laughs> the resulting... Uh, <laughs> no, can, I, can we quote you? The resulting <laughs> wave of thefts, including by some too young to drive, are enabling other crimes and leaving death in their wake. In July, 70-year-old Fua Hang of St. Paul was killed in a hit-and-run by a driver in a stolen Kia who broadsided Hang's vehicle, a 15-year-old was arrested. In December, a 14-year-old died from injuries sustained in a single vehicle crash involving a stolen Kia in Minneapolis. In January, a teenage boy driving a Kia died, stolen Kia, died after being shot and crashing in North Minneapolis. But we don't expect behavior from these 14-year-olds. We expect willing county attorneys... To let these 14-year-olds back out on the street and just make it a little harder for them to steal the damn thing. Yeah. That's our answer. That's all you got to do. This That's is... the answer of the mayors and the and the attorney general. These cars must be harder to steal. It's it's sleight of hand. They're like music, uh, magicians. Uh, they're focusing on something that is not the issue. Kia even says that this isn't necessary because they offer free equipment and software uh, upgrades to owners that solves the problem. Mm-hmm. Well, it tells you that everything is everything down is up and up is down. The, the mentality and the worldview and the ideology of the political class, the closer you get to the country's tallest buildings, is that the criminals are the victims. In mm-hmm. this case, they're the victims of auto, heartless automobile manufacturers who have simply created some automobiles just too easy for 14-year-olds to steal. That's the mindset of these idiots. Mm-hmm. And so they're going to use the attorney general who was just in in concert with them to write letters to the manufacturers. What's he going to do? Threaten to sue them? Right. What what can they do? And then we uh-huh. get all this statistical uh, stuff about how many of them are stolen and uh it's only an 830% uh 836% increase of stolen Kias and Hyundais uh in 2022. No. In twenty in Minneapolis, two thousand three hundred and forty Kia and Hyundai thefts were reported in twenty twenty two, an eight hundred and thirty six increase over twenty twenty one percent. Eight hundred and thirty six percent increase in St. Paul last year. Nine hundred and fifty three Kia and Hyundai thefts were reported, a sixty one percent increase over twenty twenty one. I know. In order to take the pressure off us, let's blame Kia and Hyundai. Yeah, no, that's not even pressure. It's these kids are having it too easy. We don't want to put them in jail. We don't want to put them in reform school. We don't want to demand any accountability or expectations or responsibility to follow the law. It's obviously key. It's, it's Korea's fault. Yeah, We're going to go to Korea 
It's your Take fault. Them on down. To the point where didn't John have it recently? Was it State Farm dropped insurance coverage for both of those manufacturers? Uh, yeah, it might have been. It might have been on certain year cars. And not only has Kia uh, Hyundai offered to uh, the uh, hardware and software fix, they've also, and I didn't realize this, sent free steering wheel locks to police departments that have asked for them. And a Minneapolis police spokesman said that more than 250 such locks had been picked up by owners of the vehicles in wow. Minneapolis. Yeah. What, what the hell is wrong with these people? Fry. It's a piece of cake to steal these cars. He's admitting, he's admitting that his view of this is it's not the 14-year-old's fault. Mm -hmm. That's not leadership. It's the car's fault. It's, not leadership. it's the same thing as blaming the gun. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, right. Well, 100 there, I mean, they might have a point, but. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Allison said his office would use all the tools of the law to address the issue raising the specter of further legal action by the state and or the cities. Class action civil lawsuits have already been filed that include residents of Minnesota and more than a dozen states. Several major cities, including Seattle and Cleveland, have sued or are publicly considering it. We're evaluating our options, said Keon Dusty, a spokesman for Ellison. Similarly, Fry said all options are on the table. I wonder how many times he said that in his career as a mayor. I, I seem to remember him saying that a lot. That's a catchphrase for him. You're right. It really is. Uh, this is from February 9th of 2023. Uh, State Farm and Progressive have announced that they will not be that uh, they will not be uh, signing up any new owners of Kias and Hyundai's after 2019. Isn't that something? 2019 models, I mean, 2019 even though they've model changed. Year. Yeah. Even though they've changed. And that might have changed. This is dated February 9th, so I don't know if there's any update to that, but that's what they announced. Huh. You can't really blame them, can you? Uh, uh, don't get me going on insurance Don't get them started. Don't, can't don't do even it. go down right, that road. On. It's too late in the week for that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what, a, what a sad, sad and embarrassing group of people we are as these cities continue to decline. This is an aside, but I thought of this maybe as recently as yesterday or last night. But I've said to you that the worse the news gets, the lighter the news, mm -hmm. the worse the conditions in the world become. Yes. Mm -hmm. The worse the conditions in the Twin Cities become, the more meaningless the local newscasts, or the national for that matter. And I got to thinking... They, they even keep up this false cheerfulness about how fun it is to come downtown and dine. Oh, yeah. And, you know, go to snow sculpturing events or whatever the hell's going on. And they're completely ignoring that, well, you better not show up in a Kia. Or come after 6 p.m. <laughs> right. I mean, you're either going to get shot or have your car stolen. And they it's just this, this false front of cheerfulness, just the way they reacted to the... Uh, to the uh, surplus. Oh, look what we've accomplished. Minnesota's economy is strong. No, all you've accomplished is you've allowed, you've allowed these clowns to grow the government by $18 billion a year, which will take funding in perpetuity. And now we're going to blame Kia and Hyundai. I guess uh, because both of them have corrected this problem, right? From what we read a month or so ago, yeah. Yes, but the Kias that are out there have not been corrected. Right, but they, like I said, hardware, software, and steering wheel locks. And, and, and think of, I don't, and think of the typical owner of a 2018 Kia. I, I'm going to draw a rash generalization, and it's admittedly rash, but they would be susceptible to agreeing to blame someone else for the theft of the car. They, they, would be, they would be vulnerable to the idea that this is a problem I shouldn't have to deal with. This should be the fault of Kia. What? How do I phrase this? I jumped to a conclusion about Kia while searching for a, a used vehicle for uh, the roommate. Um, they're cheaper and they don't last as long as, say, a Honda or a Toyota. 
you don't see a lot of these things with 200,000 miles on them. And when you go to buy them new, they're very affordable. So I think people with very, very tight budgets, are that's their customer base. Right. That's all I've learned about Kias. And you just don't see any for sale with 225,000 on it. And you see a lot of CRVs for sale with 2K, 200K. What's, uh, what's, uh, who's Genesis? Is that Kia or Hyundai? Oh, I don't know. I don't I can know. Look it up. I have no idea. I thought that was Phil Collins. No, Genesis. I think, that's, is, I think uh, that's Hyundai, but I'll verify In the that. beginning. Well, I need that verified because God the created. Genesis is making some high-end stuff. Are they? Oh, God. Oh. Well, Genesis. Oh, yeah. Hyundai. Are, it's Hyundai? Hyundai. It's uh, Hyundai makes Genesis, apparently, and that's the equivalent of, you know, Toyota makes Lexus and Nissan is Infiniti and Honda is Acura and Hyundai is Genesis. Okay. I don't know that Kia's got a... Uh, I don't think so. I don't know, but... Uh, they the are Carp. headquartered in Seoul, South Korea. The Kia Carp, top of the line. Kia Carp. But Carp. they have the Genesis, the like G70. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's... That's what Tiger was driving when he broke his legs. Oh. And that vehicle got the crap beat out of it. Because Genesis sponsors the LA Open at Riviera, which is still, uh, Tiger's still the host of. And uh, At the auto show, I would... I was impressed by the Genesis line. We go there every oh, year. Oh, they're nifty. They're Tell nifty. me something. Since we're talking cars. Yeah, what do you want to know? I've noticed cars. with the uh, Elon Musk cars, the uh, like Tesla. Teslas. They look like dolphins. How come they don't have any badging on them? They got a little, you know, mystical cross in the back. A little. They do? Yeah, a little T that looks kind of uh, Roman in nature. Whatever happened of... to the car that's on the side? Impala. Yeah. Yep. That's what I need. Yep. You want flames well, down the doors. I, I, they all look so much the same. I, I I need to see who's making them, you know. And the days are gone where you can look at a car 200 yards away and know exactly what it is. They all look alike. Or oh, there's a funny story about that um, <laughs> snail that was at the dealership and wanted a bunch of S's Look put at that on the car. S-cargo. That's yeah. right, Matt. That's a very <laughs> up-to-date joke, isn't it? <laughs> Every second grader listening right now is laughing. I can't let this go. God, I know we should be moving timing. along. You're such a yeah, let's get her done here. You've been sitting on that one a while, haven't you, Matt? <laughs> yeah, I've been waiting to work it in. The, uh, the regressives have gotten... To the Toronto Raptors NBA team. Oh, yeah. The what, regressive guy. What's got going them. on? What do we got? Well, the Toronto Raptors posted a video celebrating Women's History Month. That's okay. great. I didn't know it was Women's History Month. I thought it was Black History. Oh, was it March? By asking three members of the team what made women run the world. Uh oh. However, the answers got criticism, and the team is walking back the video because the regressive spoke. What, how bad was it? The 13-second video asked via a graphic, Beyonce said girls run the world. Why do you think that's true? Uh, Precious Achua, they got a player named Precious Achua, answered, they birth everybody. While Malachi Flynn said, they're the only ones who can procreate. And Scotty Barnes said, all women are great because they're all queens. Well, then the regressive said, no, no, you're wrong. Men can give birth, too. God and bless Toronto, America. And see, we don't have anybody in this world that's willing to say, go bleep yourself. Right. And the Toronto uh, Raptors should have said, let's see, who, who operated? Uh, the, the organization agreed with the criticism as the video was deleted. We're an organization that prides itself on doing the right thing when it comes to inclusion and representation. And we made a mistake, the team said. Our sincerest apologies to our players, our staff, and our fans. We'll work to to do better today and every day after. I don't, uh, I don't know who they were reacting to unless it was literally social media posts. Oh, they they got POP'd, point of privilege. Mm-hmm. But they didn't say go bleep yourself. No, they caved. No. They caved. I will never be interested again in the Toronto Raptors, not that I ever was. I don't know a thing about the Raptors. I didn't know they had a player named Precious. Yeah, I didn't either. Did you know that, Reeves? I didn't know they had a player named Precious. Precious Achua. Didn't they just win the title a couple of years ago? I don't know. The Toronto. Oh, a friend of mine, a co-worker of mine, got POP'd on Twitter recently. She made a reference I believe it's it Matthew, you know this. Is there somebody out there, an artist named Sam Smith? Yes. Yes. 
Yeah, he does weird. He's the outfits. devil suit. The yeah, red he does suit. weird outfits. And yeah. she referred to Sam Smith as a he, and immediately got pop'd because Sam Smith, his um, pronoun evidently is they them. Oh, go wow. bleep yourself. So, so she was chastised wow. publicly for that. Wow. I do have a note from uh, Dave. Isbemer, who said the bride and I had an enjoyable couple of weeks wandering the countryside of Texas last month. It was warm, the people were friendly, and the beer was cold. While enjoying a cold one in a Texas ice house, a beer bar, we found ourselves in the middle of a surprise birthday party for one of the local ranchers. Before the barbecue and tacos were served, a cowboy got up, a real cowboy, dirt on his boots, dust on his jeans, and a worn cowboy hat. He got everyone's attention and asked us all to stand, remove our hats, and face the colors. Yes, we all recited the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a round of applause. He then asked if there were any veterans or service members in the bar. A few older guys raised their hands, and he thanked them for their service, followed by more applause and cheers. He then asked us to all bow our heads, and he said a prayer of thanks for food, friends, and wishes for the birthday boy. He finished with, if you aren't friends with everyone yet, you will be by the end of the evening. And he wasn't kidding. We made many new friends that evening. It was a far better atmosphere than the one we came back to in Minnesota with the governor's budget plan and the nonstop passage of turd laws that will adversely (laughs) affect the quality of life here. The second ray of hope is that we will be able to leave this liberal disaster and enjoy a better life outside the sphere of euphoria. Good luck and always pushing back and moving on, Dave in White Bear Lake, Minnesota. Well, I guess he's getting to leave. Mm. You know what? Would you ever hear that in a bar in this state? Maybe if you got out state enough. Oh, yeah, yeah. You'd, you'd hear it up here, definitely. Yeah. And then uh, right after the a, a, uh, amen, everybody would proceed to get blackout drunk. Right, right, <laughs> right. Uh, can we come back with the scramble, please? I'll say. Yeah. Oh, that, isn't that the same thing? It's all about that bass. Well, what do you mean, Matthew? It's, it's right here. See? Yeah. Play it's it. a sweet bass. I'm not joking, Kenny. You sound like bite. That's not a joke. Look. Look. He says look. He answers everything with look. That's his like. Yeah. Kenny, you're not going to play for real? For real? It's a scramble. It's a scramble. No. Only because they come to us all the way from the traveling linemen. That's 1.30 already? In Marleth Park in Pumalanga, South Africa. Worldwidewaftage.com. You can see the giraffes peeking into their abode and the whole deal. On this day. Today is March 3rd. In 1849. Minnesota Territory was signed into existence by President James K. Polk. I think we have a Polk County in Minnesota. The territory has a population of about 10,000 Native people and 5,000 white settler colonists and includes present-day North and South Dakota, east of the Missouri. The U.S. Postal Service released a commemorative three-cent centennial stamp on this date in 1949. Okay. Okay. On this day in 1853, Fillmore County, honoring President Millard Fillmore, was created. Is he the one that haunted the White House, supposedly? I don't know. Remember Rooftop O'Toole? No. That cartoon? Vaguely. Okay. On this day in 1855, St. Louis County, the state's largest, 6,611 square miles, was established, named for the St. Louis River. Uh, Scott, Sherburn, Sibley, St. Louis, Steele, St. Louis, Steele, Stevens, and Swift. And Samuel. L. Jackson. On this day in 1855, (laughs) the legislature of Minnesota Territory decided to send an immigration commissioner to New York. Beginning in June, Eugene Bernand of St. Paul represented the territory in Manhattan, where he encouraged immigrants to make Minnesota their new home. And imagine how many of those saps took his advice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You'll but love now it here. try to get out of here every winter. What year was that? Did you say 55? 1855. That went on through the 80s, mm-hmm. where we had representatives out there that would actually meet them 
um, at Ellis Island. Hey, well, come on out to Minnesota. Was, You're gonna was love Ellis it. Island in business then? Well, it would meet them when so. they got when they got off the boat wherever the hell that was. What would be dumber, that or the current governor uh, begging people from yes, Florida to move here? Right. <laughs> and finally, on this day in 1990, Joe, today is March 3rd. The team led by Will Steger of Ely completed a 3,800 mile international trans Antarctica expedition. The first dog sled traverse of the continent by its widest distance. And then Will, who uh, is uh, just obviously uh, brain damaged by all that cold weather, <laughs> came to the state fair to talk up global warming and to prove it. He brought a big hunk of ice and threw it uh, at our feet in front of our studio at the state fair and i had to say will it's august <laughs> right because right he on. said look um, at that ice melting i said yes will it's august once again put me in the position of defending will uh, steger is a modern day mountain man who during ice breakup every year goes into the boundary waters alone will is a 100 percent fruitcake he is a badass. I happen to like him, by the way. In the wilderness. Yeah. He was a He's nice guy. He's a badass. You said that was 1990, right? Yeah. That's when I met Will's mom, uh, because I was playing nice. Will on the phone, calling from a McDonald's pay phone. <laughs> and uh, his mom called up and said, uh, I don't think that was my son. There's no pay phones there. <laughs> Doesn't he make moccasins? Isn't that his language? He's got a he's got some sort of camp thing, school thing yeah. going up in the Ely area, as far as I know. Yeah. I like well, your style. You got that whole cowboy thing. You got the cowboy thing going. That's nice. <laughs> but uh, seriously, Joe, I mean, he goes up there during breakup, the most dangerous time of year, and, and sleeps alone in a tent. I don't see you lasting Not more anymore. than... He's about 90. I don't see you lasting 15 minutes in a tent outside of your front uh, door. Never claimed that I would or could. Don't have any interest in sleeping in a tent. Yeah, same here. Yeah. I, as a matter of fact, if it's less than three stars, I'm not interested in I staying at I your want hotel. Four. I want four. <laughs> yeah, at least, baby. I want four stars, and I want a beach. I like Jeez. to stay at a place where I can park right in front of the door I'm yeah, walking into too. the room. Yeah, The no-tell motel. So I can see where the car's at. That's it's right. It's right there. Except if it's a Kia or a Hyundai. Right, then it's going to get look stolen. look out, it's gone. It's gone. But you got a mayor in town and both Couple towns and an yeah. attorney general to say, that ain't... That ain't the criminal's fault. Nope. That's the car manufacturers are responsible for that. Thank Word. you, GLers. Thank you, GLers, for choosing this podcast that possibly you found on Pod MN on your smartphone. That's a library of podcasts that you can choose from. If you ever get bored with this one, you can switch them up and, you know, figure it out for yourself, will you? If you want to go to YouTube and subscribe to the Garage Logic. Uh, page, what is that? It's the, a landing the site. The Garage Logic YouTube channel. Channel, that's what it is. Yeah, you can sign up. There's some good stuff on there. Chanel. The Garage Logic Town Council can be found, and you should be a member of that because you're going to get some great, great insight to Garage Logic. That's at garagelogic.com. Including a well thought out uh, letter from the mayor each and every week. And he signed it. Online store at garagelogic.com. Happy Scramble Friday. Cha! What is cha? I don't know.